So for the next DIY project, it did something kind of different. A soup can microphone. And this is unique in that it's not a kit. Um, it's literally something I just kind of built on my own. Now it's not an original idea. Uh, there are, if you Google soup can microphone or beer can microphone or what have you, there are all kinds of formulas that people have already done. What I did is I looked at them and I tried to make one that I thought um, would work for me. Um, additionally, I noticed a lot of them uh, do things that really require you to make a series of microphones. For instance, you need some deadening material on the inside. We'll get to that in a second. But uh, one of them said to use a packing foam and you have to buy it in like two foot sheets. And it's not terribly expensive, but it's just like, you know, if you want to make one microphone, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, so I tried to make one that anyone could make, you know, try to figure it out. And a lot of them, you know, people make them out of beer cans, but aluminum beer cans are very weak. Um, so there's people that suggest that you use a steel beer can, a vintage beer can that's made of steel or soda can. Well, the problem there is then you have to pay for those and uh, they get, you know, they get a little bit pricier. And then if you don't have that laying around, you know, anyway, so I just used a soup can. And I just went to Target and bought a can of tomato soup. It was 52 cents, including the soup. Uh, I had the soup and then voila, I have a can. Um, so for starters, to make this, you start with your empty can. And the things that you need is you need your can, you need a ball jar top, a standard ball jar top. So you want the insert and the, the tightening ring. Now, I'm lucky that my wife cans, so she had some of these around, but I checked, and if you go to Target or all kinds of places, you can buy them in five packs and 10 packs, so if you don't have one, you can't just get one that I found, but you can get like five or 10 that's pretty inexpensive. I think they ended up costing something in the neighborhood of about 50 cents a lid, so pretty cheap um, so far. Now, you can see I kind of did this screen. Um, so that is just a piece of porch screen, uh, just like you'd use in in a in a, um, uh, in a screen door. Now, I realize not everybody has that laying around, so I found out that at Lowe's, Home Depot, or other places, you can buy a patch kit that includes a three by three piece of screen. It's $2.77. So if you don't have screen laying around, that's a way to get it. You can see underneath the screen, there's a piece of uh, material there, and that's just a piece of an old T-shirt. Um, I literally have a rag uh, a, 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 a basket full of rags in the garage and I just grab one of them and trimmed off a piece. That's all that is to it. Now, notice, it's interesting to note the screen does nothing other than aesthetics, right? I mean, you can, you don't need the screen. The, the, the material serves to deaden the layer here, um, but the screen really does nothing other than aesthetics. So you don't really need the screen if you don't have it. Um, so, I mean, to make this thing, I'm kind of going to do a how-to here. And to make it, the first thing you do is you drill a 3 8 inch hole in the, in the bottom of the can. Then you get yourself a 20 millimeter piezo uh, disc pickup. Uh, you know, you could try different ones. I use that because I already had one on hand. Um, if you buy one of them, I think they'll cost you about $1.50. If you buy a 5-pack or a 10-pack, they'll end up costing you about $0.50 cents a piece. Um, I actually already had some, but again, pretty inexpensive. Um, and then you just basically, and you need, of course, a quarter inch jack. Again, I had a bunch laying around, but about the same price as the piezos they'll cost you. If you buy one, it'll cost you, you know, a buck or two. If you buy a five pack or a 10 pack, they'll cost you about 50 cents a piece. So what you do is you solder that PSO pickup to the jack. Now, sometimes you can buy PSOs that have a, um, pre-wired lead and it may be long enough depending on your soup can and depending on how long the leads are. In my case, it was not, so I just extended it, used some heat shrink tubing to put it together. Um, but in any case, you could, do, you could do whatever would make sense for your situation. Um, so then you put that into the bottom of the can, you screw it on and you flip it over. And then on the top of the can, you're gonna hot glue your piezo to this insert on the ball jar. So you just literally take a little dab of hot glue, put it on there, press it, hold it for a few seconds, and then it's basically done. Then at that point, uh, you can basically put it together. However, what you'll find is if you just put it together, you'll get feedback because of all this uh, space in the can will, will 
kind of just naturally feed back. So you need some deadening material. So again, I'd found things where people said to use sponges, to use, or excuse me, to use uh, packing foam or to use other things. And um, I couldn't really see an easy way to do that uh, for a single one. So I just went to a local auto parts store and bought a sponge. It cost me $2.99 um, and then I just cut it. And I just used a plain old sponge. This one happens to be blue, but that's just the way it is. It's no different than the yellow sponges that you see everywhere else. That's it. I just, it was cheap and easy. So I bought a piece of sponge. There's enough left over. I could probably do another microphone or two if I had to. Um, very simple, just trim it, put it into the can. Then you just put it together. Um, so you'll cut, take your, your t-shirt material and your screen material and just kind of cut two circles, sandwich the whole thing together. And then I just, once I had it together, I just kind of held it like this and took a drill and just drilled four holes around, very small holes. And then I stuck four nails in there, four small brad nails in there and that holds the top on and that's it. And because the sponge is pushing up, nothing goes anywhere. It stays nice and sturdy. Everything works out good, but that's it. That's this whole thing. It's basically a jack and a piezo pickup with a sponge in there to deaden the, the excess and then uh, with, the, with the material on top to keep the, the top from rattling and the screen is literally just for looks. Very, very simple, um, very, very easy stuff. You could make one of these yourself for just a matter of a few dollars or you know whatever I rattled off there, pretty easy. Now it's basically just a lo-fi microphone. It has like an AM radio sound. It's a, it's very lo-fi, very, um, it's not precision at all. So if what you're looking for is a precision microphone, this is not your deal. But um, this could have a lot of uses. I mean, you could sing into it if you're trying to do that AM radio effect. You could play a harmonica into it, use it as a harmonica pickup. It would really kind of give it that lo-fi effect. Or you could do something else with it, like plug it into a modular synth. Others called him a mad doctor who could restore life to foul corpses. No respectable citizen of the town had anything to do with that. Then one year, their family moved into town. They had a lovely daughter, Rachel, who caught Mad Henry's eye. He showered the maid with gifts. Goblets of pure gold, necklaces of pearl, and a pot of daisies. Never dropped a single petal. Despite these gifts, Rachel fell in love with another, Jeffrey, a handsome young man, just home from university. Shortly after meeting, they eloped. DIY soup can microphone, build it for a few bucks, nothing special. Sounds lo-fi as heck, but pretty cool for an afternoon.